Welcome to the 2021 Legislative Conversations virtual event. I'm Daxton Mays, Chairman of the Governmental Affairs Committee for the Hartsville Area Chamber of Commerce. The Hartsville Area Chamber of Commerce is committed to engaging our business community um, in the legislative process and we want to take this opportunity to engage our businesses with our legislative uh, body here in the local area. This event is generally part of our State of the uh, State address uh, and breakfast. However, this year we are offering this as a virtual event. Um, some of the questions you'll hear during this event came from uh, the polling of our membership and community members to uh, get their feedback to what they want to hear about and what they want to hear from our legislators. Um, we are excited to be able to present this and you will get to hear from uh, our local legislative body and we hope you enjoy. After recording these videos, we realized we had so much quality information that we didn't want to just limit it to one long video. So we've broken it up into five individual segments that are in short 20 to 30 minute segments that you will be able to enjoy over the course of the next week. Starting out, this very first video will be an introduction to our legislators. You'll hear their history and their background, what they do in their bivocational work, and a little bit about why they're passionate about being your legislator. We hope you'll enjoy and learn a lot as you engage in this process. Good morning, this is Missy Evans and I am the president of the Hartsville Area Chamber of Commerce and we are here today with the intention of um, letting our legislators have an opportunity to share with you about the upcoming session that begins here the first part of February. Uh, they are already hard at work preparing for the issues that they're, they're going to be facing on our behalf. And we wanted to give you an opportunity to just get a little closer to those that represent you. Uh, these gentlemen are already members of our community. This is work that they do on top of their full-time work here in this area. And um, we're really grateful for what they do. So this is our opportunity to help educate you as the citizens and as the community members here in Hartsell, as well as to inspire within you community action. Because we want you to know that these fellas are right here, ready to talk to you and ready to carry your voice um, into the places that can really make a difference. So starting out, I want to introduce Parker Moore. And uh, Parker, would you just take a second and introduce yourself? Tell a little bit about your history here in the community as well as um, your work as a legislator. And then uh, tell the community some of the things you're expecting to see when you go into session this, this coming month and um, how it might be a little bit different than what you've experienced previously. Sure, well thank you for having us, Missy. Um, I am Parker Moore, I represent House District 4 which encompasses part of Morgan and Limestone counties. Uh, my family goes back three to four generations here in this community. I was born and raised here, went to school here, and went off to the University of Alabama and got my degree in political science and wound up coming back here and started doing some political consulting work and eventually decided I wanted to run myself and you know, took that leap of faith and was fortunate enough to be elected and um, it's an honor to serve and um, my uh, grandfather was a physician here for about 40 years and my father-in-law was an administrator here and coached basketball for uh, many years and um, it's always been home and I just uh, yeah. tell us a little bit about what you do vocationally yeah and I I work with Encore Rehabilitation. We do uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, uh, aquatics, uh, pain management therapy, and I'm their, their marketing rep for North Central Alabama. And I've been doing that for about three and a half years as my full vocation. Yes, and you're married and you have a brand new son that's just arrived in December, isn't that right? Correct. Uh -huh. I've been married uh, three years now almost, and we've got a 22-month-old little girl, Collins Ann, and have a four-week-old son, Duncan Jean. So, That's exciting. That's very 
Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your work as a legislator, and uh, especially going into this session of 2021, which we all fully expect to look a little different. Um, I know there's some some hot topics that uh, you're going to be having to address, but tell us what are some of the things that you're anticipating um, seeing this this session and then maybe how it will be a little bit different than years past. Sure. Well, first off, I'm on uh, three committees, boards, agencies, boards, agencies and commissions, transportation, utilities and infrastructure and fiscal responsibility. And this session will wind up this actually this whole quadrennium, this four years has been very unique, if you will. Um, but th this session in particular, because of the virus, they have implemented you know, several different strategies for us to remain safe while we're down there. They're going to put a um, certain number of us on the House floor. There'll be a certain number of us up in the gallery. And then they're going to have two overflow rooms of eight people in each room. And they're going to wind up giving us tablets if we're not on the floor and able for us to vote and view legislation that's coming up to be debated and voted on. And um, if we're not out and about voting and on the floor or up in the gallery, they're pretty much restricting us to our offices to try and, you know, reduce that risk as much as possible. So I think it's going to be very unique in regards to that. And they're going to wind up only having, I think, five committee rooms that they're going to use so they can make sure that it stays clean when we get out and they do not having to space themselves out down there to try and maintain, you know, sanitation purposes to try and keep us all safe. So. Good. And just um, one final question, just to give you a few minutes to maybe share, what are some of the issues that you feel passionate about that you expect to see this session and that you're looking forward to having an opportunity to address on behalf of our community? Sure, absolutely. Um, one, one of the things I think we'll wind up seeing is the medical marijuana bill. We're going to probably see some form of a lottery gambling bill to get back to the people to vote on. I think you'll wind up, you'll see some, several, a whole day we'll have of local bills and then a lot of economic development, community type stimulus type bills that will help, you know, some of our more rural areas as well as, you know, here. And um, I, I think we're going to wind up having a very productive session, even though it's going to be a little bit out of the ordinary. All right, excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Anything else that you want to share before we move into questions and things like that? I think I'm good. Okay, thank good. You. All right. Well, then I'm going to turn to Scott, Scott Stodhagen. And uh, we're really thankful. He, he represents Hartzell here. And uh, so tell us the same kind of questions. Just take a second to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your history in our community, uh, what you do for work and um, your family, that kind of thing, and other, other ways that you've served here in this area. And then your work as a legislator. Okay. Well, I want to start off by thanking you, Missy, and the chamber. Um, the city and the chamber getting involved with us guys. Um, building that relationship and making sure that back home is taken care of. I want to commend you on your efforts for that. Um, my name is Scott Stahagen. I represent District 9. Um, my family is Amy Ann Peck Stahagen, and we have a daughter, Colin Zane Stahagen. Um, I started off in politics, I guess, as far as getting involved. Um, I started off in the chamber. Um, I was on the board of directors, and that kind of progressed to me ultimately becoming the chairman. Um, it's a great experience, something I've always treasured, the work that we have done in the past. Um, but that kind of led to where I'm at now. Um, it evolved through the chamber, and my passion grew stronger and stronger to do back for my community. Um, once we finished, I think there was the Farmer's Market Project, is when I really knew that I wanted to do more um, on a larger scale. And we took that leap of faith, as Parker said earlier, and we were successful. And... That's been my goal ever since in this role is to listen to the people of our district, represent them the best I know how, and always make sure we are there for them. I think that's very important in our role. Um, professionally, I'm the owner, president of Hagen Homes. I started my company in 2005 right after college. And 
I always loved construction and development and so forth, and my degree from West Alabama is in education, but I wanted to kind of take that leap of faith and start my own company, and I'm grateful that I did. Um, we build houses all over North Alabama. Um, as far as legislation that I'm passionate about this upcoming year, um, if you've followed me as a legislator, I'm very passionate about mental health. Um, I was very involved in doing the mental health stepping up dinner last year in Decatur at Ingalls Harbor. We raised a substantial amount of money for Morgan County. All the proceeds stayed in Morgan County, which I was very grateful for. And I think we can always do more. And I think with this pandemic, it's actually going to open up the doors more for mental health. I think people are really struggling. I think we need to address that when we go to Montgomery. Um, most importantly, the teachers are probably struggling a little bit as well. I think we need to address possibly looking into someone being there for them, someone you know that they can talk to because a lot of them are feeling a lot of pressure, a lot of stress by the environment that they're working in. I think that's a huge concern for us. Um, ultimately, it's going to be a tough session. Um, I think if we can get the two budgets passed and all of our local legislation, that's a good session. I've got a lot of bills that I'm going to kind of, kind of just sit back and see how we end up. Um, I've got some several law enforcement bills that I'm passionate about. I think we always need to show our support for our law enforcement, which I've done so in the past through past legislation. And from that, I think it's you know uncharted territories. We just have to see how it goes. Um, I think the governor has done the best job she could with what she's had, but. Who would have thought a year from now that we'd be wearing masks everywhere and that'd be the norm, yeah, you know? I mean, right. it's just something, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, and one thing that I've observed and I've really appreciated is the fact that uh, the governors have been given the, the ability to make decisions for what's best for their state. And I do think that our governor's done a good job with that, and I really appreciate the input that you guys have given along the way in that role. Um, and I just want to honor both of you as... as business owners and, and the business community, you know, putting your own business interest aside to, to serve in this way. Um, you're right. It, it takes that partnership with the chamber, with the city, with our state government to really do a good job for our state as a whole. So um, I just really appreciate that and thank you for that. Um, anything else you'd like to say about how you expect this session to be different? Uh, yeah, so we have been... The plan is not broadcast yet. We are um, working on it as we speak. Leadership's working daily on it. I think you touched on the governor, and um, we've got a couple legislation bills that are coming up that really, so when this pandemic started and we were basically on shutdown, correct? Um, the people want to have a voice, and that's what Parker and I are. We're their voice in Montgomery. So. There's going to be a piece of legislation that's being brought up by uh, Representative Becky Nordren, and basically it's, it puts us more in the, in the picture once the pandemic hits, once executive orders hit, there's going to be a time frame from that. Once that time frame's passed, the pro tem and the speaker can call us into session where we can express our constituents' voice in that current situation because we have not had a voice in this, and that's been the difficult part for us because we've had calls, we've had problems throughout this pandemic. We have no control over that, and that is a problem. So um, I'm looking forward to that bill. I, I think it's a good bill. Not that Kay has not done, the governor has not done a good job, but you know, our job as legislators is to rep represent the people. And if we don't have that opportunity, that's a problem. So that's gonna be a bill that I'm really looking forward to. Um, there's another bill that also was a, a liability bill for businesses and cities, municipalities that Arthur Orr had. Um, unfortunately, that did not come to the table at the end of session last year. I was hoping it would. Um, I'm looking forward to that bill also coming to the table. Um, if that bill would have come through, we would have had a Christmas parade. Mm. We would have had a lot more functions in this city because the liability would have been taken off of the city. Mm -hmm. So that is a huge piece of legislation that we have to address as well. Do you expect that to come to session this this session? Come to come to what do you, what do you call it? Come to fruition this session? Uh huh. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It will definitely come. Okay. It will definitely Good. come. Well, I think all private business owners um, need that to happen. 
we all need that to happen. And I know that as a chamber, we really ran up against that um, repeatedly as we tried to execute um, events and programs. And even with the following protocol, um, that you know, if that had been in place, we would have had a lot more success. So I'm, we're looking forward to that. Um, Okay, well, we're gonna move into asking some questions unless there's anything else either one of you want to share. Um, I don't wanna take away that opportunity. If you have anything else you wanna share before we move into questions. Y'all good? Okay. I'll share something real quick. Okay, please. Go I ahead. would like to remind everyone that, that we are here for you. Um, just in case we get going and we forget, um, we represent you and, that, and we take pride in that. Um, you have to reach out if something bothers you, if something, if you read a piece of legislation or if you read the, the news article that something bothers you, please feel free to reach out for us because if we're not hearing anything from our constituents back home, then we think it's good legislation and, you know, that's how you help us make, determine our decision how we vote on bills. Um, I know when it comes to educational bills, I reach out to our educators. I want to know where they're at because they're in the trenches. I'm not. Um, law enforcement do the same thing with our sheriffs and our police chiefs. Um, throughout the, that's how I kind of handle my my business in Montgomery. So I just want to encourage each and every one of you, if you if you have any issues with anything, and sometimes it's great to hear positive phone calls as well. Um, we don't get those as much, but it, we do get them, and it feels good. I mean, you know, it feels good to somebody call and say thank you for the work you did for law enforcement, and that you know. Just them little calls is like a good good shot on the golf course. You know, there's not many of them, but it keeps you coming back. And um, I just want to thank everyone, and that's, you know, really, that's it. Just make sure you reach out to us and keep us informed. And, and I, I was just going to say, I'd like to expand just a little bit on that, too. You know, if you're a business owner or just a concerned citizen that sees a need that is not being addressed in the community and you need legislation or interested in, you know, helping get legislation drafted, please do reach out to us because that's what we're here for is to, like Scott said, is to represent you and to help draft legislation that might be beneficial that to you and your family or your business or out in the community that we might not be aware of. So please do reach out to us and we're always open and available to take your call. Yeah, and I just want to say too that as the chamber, we want to help bridge that gap you may feel so even with this recording we're going to make sure that you have access to how to reach out to them we'll make sure you've got all of that information and then if if you don't know where to go reach out to us and we'll make sure that you get connected to that right representative to um, the right organization to make your voice heard so that's very important that's the role that we want to fill as the chamber because we want to be a connector for you All right, well, I am Missy Evans with the Hartzell Area Chamber, and I have Arthur Orr with me here today. Um, we are very excited about having him alongside of us, but the point of our meeting today is what we would normally host is a legislative breakfast, which is an opportunity to let our community come alongside and get a little up close and personal with our state legislators to uh, learn more about what they're expected to see in the next legislative session, as well as just to get to know them more and to know uh, some of the things that they're facing every day and the ways that they represent us, the community, and uh, speak on behalf of us. So we wanna take a quick minute and uh, let Senator Orr introduce himself and just take a second Introduce yourself to the community. Um, yesterday, we talked about the fact that your role is bivocational. You have a day job, and um, so this is something that you do above and beyond the work that you do to, to feed your family. And um, and we want to hear a little bit about the history of your work in the legislation in the in the legislative assembly. Good, good to be with you. And uh, what a beautiful facility here at Life Church. It, it, Appreciate your hosting this and having it. Um, I appreciate the the ones that'll be viewing this. It um, uh, hopefully will be informative and will tell you some things you maybe did not know. Um, as Missy said, my name is Arthur Orr. I serve in the state senate. Uh, we've heard from 
House members that we have, Representative Moore and Representative Stahagen. But as the senator, I have all of Hartzell and uh, certainly proud to, to have that. As far as uh, my roots, uh, my great-grandfather uh, was a businessman here. My grandfather grew up here and graduated from Morgan County High School. And then I grew up a uh, greater part of my life in Danville and uh, North uh, Punk Pumpkin Center. So um, anyway, to the west of here, but uh, frequently came to uh, Hartzell to you know, get a, a hamburger or do things on Main Street. And um, anyway, just good to be always in, in Hartzell. As far as um, legislature, uh, what do I see? What, what have, you know, recent history, uh, to me, it's uh, always important to help the areas that you represent and uh, just recent things that come to mind as far as Hartzell is concerned. Uh, we announced, uh, or the governor announced, uh, the Highway 31 uh, project improvement that Mayor Garrison has uh, had put forth, and it came to a committee I serve on called the HREP2 committee, and was pleased to uh, push Hartzell's project. And one thing I've learned sitting in, in crucial seats in the legislature, uh, very important. Uh, Representative Moores and Stahagen uh, being new to the legislature, uh, it'll take time, but eventually if they stick with it, uh, they'll serve in uh, more senior positions and be able to influence things. But getting that um, $1.5 million along with the city match uh, to, to do something with 31 uh, North and uh, improve that area of the roadway, and then also uh, we'll be looking at phase two in a few years once that gets done. But uh, a visionary project that I think will help with congestion and traffic movement um, on US 31 that's important for Hartzell. Another thing uh, recently uh, got paved, uh, the Barkley Bridge School uh, parking lot, which uh, had been a, on the list for some time, but worked to find some funding to get that done with uh, Superintendent Jones and uh, that has certainly helped uh, relieve some congestion, parking congestion there at Barclay Bridge. Uh, a piece of legislation that passed in 2020, and not many did, was a bond issue for schools. And the reason it uh, made a lot of sense is that we had uh, some significant debt rolling off. In other words, we had paid it off. Uh, the bond rates or the interest rates are at historic lows. And then to hopefully help the economy, we were worried at the time with COVID how uh, badly it would hurt our Alabama economy, but have the construction uh, occur uh, during our, you know, pr predictably, at least back in May, could, could have been an economic slow time for us. So have those dollars coming in to help the construction uh, industry uh, with school funding. So th my recollection, $4.5 million came to Hartzell City Schools to help with capital projects. And that's always uh, something uh, that is needed because you have a growing system here in Hartzell due to the success of the schools and to due to the uh, excellence that you have here uh, with the Hartzell City Schools. Uh, then finally, something that's kind of a work in progress is the, the pocket park on Main Street that comes to mind that uh, with the playground and then having the walkway uh, from that pocket park all the way to the farmer's market that uh, Representative Stahagen, when he was in private uh, life and not public life, uh, was so instrumental and, and helped get the funding for that farmer's market. But uh, creating that, uh, that walkway, that green space between Main Street and the farmer's market and trying to pull uh, the farmer's market closer into kind of the epicenter of the city, which is Main Street. But working with Mayor Garrison and his team to uh, make that happen, and I think certainly that'll be a good thing uh, over time for, for Hartzell. So those are a few things as far as my private life. Um, I, my day job, as I call it, or the one that pays the bills, is uh, working for Cook's Pest Control as their executive vice president and doing uh, all the administrative side, which includes you know, 
IT, uh, finance, uh, fleet, properties and grounds, marketing, uh, HR, uh, legal, uh, and I probably left a few things out. But uh, So it keeps me busy, but uh, it, that's the reason the good Lord put me here, uh, to stay uh, busy doing uh, hopefully important uh, and insignificant things. But lastly, just very honored to represent this area and uh, serve in the legislature. And uh, again, appreciate being here uh, to answer questions. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you touched on several things that are near and dear to the chamber because that's why we exist is to help make our community a better place to live, better place to work, better place to play. And you already addressed ways that you have been working to address needs in our community, needs in our schools and needs in our businesses. And, uh, you know, COVID has been a, a difficult time and I know it's going to shape a lot of what you're going to be looking at as you go into session in 2021. So tell us a little bit about what you're expecting with the upcoming session and um, how it's going to maybe look a little different and how y'all expect to get business done. Yeah, good, good question. Um, we don't know. I imagine that. I find it humorous many times in public service that people uh, once they're elected, they think they have all the answers. And uh, I say that tongue in cheek, but there's some truth that, to that because, um, again, I, I shared with somebody in Montgomery one time, and he uh, he's a lobbyist, and he confirmed that suspicion of mine. He said, you'd be surprised how many candidates, uh, once they get uh, elected, think, uh, their intelligence level has increased you know, many fold <laughs> over. So um, anyway, answer is we don't know. We're going to work for our first two weeks and uh, work three-day legislative days the first two weeks in February, then take a break and see where we are. Because if you think about it, at any time, if you have uh, legislators start getting infected and, and with the virus, um, you don't know how many are going to have to quarantine that are related or we're interacting with those people that get the virus. And so just unknown. You could have 25% of the legislature out in a matter of days. So we'll, we'll play it by ear, as they say. Important legislation at the top of the list are three. Uh, one is a bill that I'm sponsoring that I came up with back in March, was driving down uh, 31, looking at all the retail businesses that were shuttered and, and some you know big box opens, that's a whole nother can of worms, but um, looking at that and thinking as an attorney, what's gonna happen with the legal fallout from COVID? What, 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 what's a business owner to do if someone claims that they caught the virus in their place of business? Or what's an employer to do if an employee says, well, I called it at work, how will that employer or that business respond in that situation? And in my opinion, it'd be very difficult. How do you prove a negative? How do you prove they didn't? And so working with the business community and the trial uh, community, the plaintiff bar, we came up with an agreed upon bill that should offer limited emphasis on limited protection for businesses, nonprofits like the chamber, churches called me, wanted to be included, governments, local governments, counties, et cetera. Uh, the kitchen sink is in there, but there's some limitations on the, uh, on the liability uh, that, that would occur. And it all is predicated on a business or entity following the health guidelines of the CDC and the Alabama Department of Public Health. And so, for example, if a business uh, did not uh, require mask in their store and did not require social distancing to police the best they could or allowed large crowds in their business over the, the capacity limits that Governor Ivey had implemented, then they would receive no protection under this, this uh, bill or to become law. Similarly, if an employer subjected their employees to risky situations, didn't require masks in the workplace if workers were working very closely to, to side by side or no pexiglass or no sanitation uh, measures. So didn't take those precautions has, had been laid out by the health authorities, then they would receive no protection. But for the good actors, 
uh, they would receive some protection, assuming they weren't reckless or willful or wanton, et cetera. So that's uh, the, the bill in a nutshell, and I would assume it's going to move very quickly through the legislature. Other bills, uh, two other bills, one deals with income taxes. Uh, as you know, uh, those that receive the federal check uh, should not be taxed on that. That's certainly the, um, the opinion of, of lawmakers in Montgomery, but we've got to pass a law to uh, make sure there is no income tax uh, hitting individuals uh, there, you know, in the, in the pocketbook. And then uh, lastly, I can't remember the last bill. I should know it. Uh, it's, it fails my mind, but there is a third bill mm -hmm. um, floating around out there. And if I remember it, I'll certainly yeah, uh, and, share it, it with you. It might you, come but up it, when we ask questions, yeah, too. Yeah, it, so. it should fly through as well. Okay, good. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Missy, for having me in the chamber. It's been a privilege to be here. And thank you all for enduring uh, maybe my verbose responses. Uh, my wife tells me a lot that... TMI or too much information, but I guess when you've been involved with this for some period of time, there probably aren't short answers, but thank you for your attention, and I did want to say, uh, remember, we remember the third thing that uh, as far as the three bills that will pass at the outset, and that's an economic development incentive uh, bill or two bills, our legislation for our companies is expired, it expired in December, so that's something also that we're going to have to move off the move out of the legislature fairly quickly in those first two weeks. As far as going forward, uh, it is a, indeed a very great honor and privilege to represent this area in uh, Montgomery. And if I can ever do anything for you or your family member or whatever, or you have questions, always feel free to contact me. Uh, you can find me on the web. Uh, I think the Hartzell Chamber may list our contact information. But uh, certainly that's my job and, and willing to do all I can uh, in any situation uh, for the time that the uh, Lord has me in the legislature. But very humbled and very honored to uh, represent you. And no, you, I may not, you may not always agree, uh, but uh, I, my wife, again, she doesn't always agree with me, but uh, my, I see my job uh, and take it very seriously as uh, one that's important for this area and certainly try to do all I can to, to improve our area and help it to grow uh, the best I can. So thank you again for your attention and thank you again, Missy, for having me. We want to thank you for joining in to this event. We hope you found it educational and we hope that you learned something and became a little bit closer to our le legislators and our legislative process. Uh, the Governmental Affairs Committee is going to offer several other opportunities throughout the year one being a trip to Montgomery to meet with our legislators. We're also going to be having a state of the city address, a state of the schools address, a state of healthcare address. And we're also gonna be reaching into the local communities to hear about what's going on with some of our surrounding areas. Um, lastly, we're gonna be working to develop our public policy agenda for the 2021-2022 year. And uh, we're asking for volunteers. We would love to have you join in. Uh, make your voice heard and be a part of our, our committee as we move forward and work to move hearts in the right direction. If these sessions have been helpful to you, please take a moment and reach out to your state legislator or senator and let him know how much. You can find a way to contact them at our website at www.heartsellchamber.com and go to our legislative resources page. We hope you understand that the Hartzell Area of Chamber of Commerce exists to serve you. As a nonprofit, we accomplish the task of helping to make the Hartzell and the surrounding area a better place to live, work, and play through volunteer leadership. So come join us, find a way to plug in and to get involved and work together to help make this the best place to live, to work, and to play.